In this video, we're going to talk about using a hard stop in your trading. Stay tuned. Hey traders, very warm welcome to you. Okay, so we know we need to use stop losses in our trading. It's to mitigate risk, it's to manage risk, it's to cap that open-ended risk that potentially comes from trading in the markets. So we're trading currencies, indices, equities, whatever it may be. So we've got some options to us. How do we place our stops? In this video, I'm going to talk about a hard stop. Now, a hard stop is basically when you say a fixed amount in pips or points. So, for example, if we're day trading the DAX, we would say to ourselves, okay, we've got a hard stop of 20 points. If we were day trading euro us dollar we might say we've got a hard stop of 15 pips so it's literally that finite number that you're always using let's have a look at the pros and cons of that so the advantage of that um if you're day trading is that you always kind of know where you are so in other words you place a trade on you always know that for that market your stop loss is going to be 20 pips 15 pips 10 pips 100 pips whatever it may be whatever market you're trading the downside is that you know market conditions change even from day to day. So one day you know you could be trading. Let's let's bring up cable just for example. Um, where are we? GBP USD. Let's bring up cable and let's stick on a 15 minute so we can kind of see a bit more uh, of the day's action. So you know one day we could be chopping around and have a really low range. Next day we could be shooting off to the stratosphere and reversing intraday. The trouble you have with using that fixed stop strategy is you're not allowing adjust, you're not adjusting for volatility. And, you know, as the risk increases, so does the kind of premium you've got to pay for the risk. You've got to, uh, you know, as the risk increases, as it has the volatility, incre uh, volatility increases, increases, should I say, so the stop is going to have to increase. Now, of course, you can reduce your position size. So if you want to risk, you know, um, 500 pounds, 100 pounds, 50 pounds, 5,000, whatever the number may be, you could obviously adjust your position size to suit. But the danger you have with using that fixed stop is that you know you're, it's never adjusted for the volatility of the day. You've always got to kind of look at the volatility of the day and then change your fixed stop. So you know there's, a, there's an issue there. Now, something I uh, used very often was a fixed stop when I was very actively day trading Dow futures many years ago i would have a fixed stop in it and the problem i found is that for a while i was my, my performance wasn't very good it was i was struggling with it and then when i analyzed my uh my data on my my trades i was using a fixed stop of of, of 10 ticks and very often the market would stop me out and then carry on and so what i did is i adjusted my stop to 15 ticks and said okay when it hits 10 you will assess it manually 15 is your hard stop, 10 is your manual assessment. And that just fundamentally changed the outcome of the trades because I just gave that a little bit, bump, bit more room. My timing wasn't that good back then, so I need that bit more room. But actually, my direction was okay, that kind of thing. So, you know, a fixed stop can work, especially if you're day trading. Um, and you kind of know straight away, like, okay, I'm going to use this stop. I use this size. You don't have to think too much on the fly. You don't have to make any decisions. You can just put your stop loss in. You kind of come to, you know, let's say you come into a double bottom setup here for whatever the strategy is. You can say, okay, I've got a 25 pip stop. Uh, I know it's going there. Does that fit in with my place I'm entering? Yes, it does. And that's another kind of good thing from, we talked about the downside of it not being adjusted with volatility. Um, and kind of not allowing for increased risk. You know, 10 tick stop um, nowadays would be just would be ludicrous on some markets because it, it does 10 ticks in in kind of a few seconds the way it swings. But you know, back then it's fine. But let's say, for example, let's say let's go through an example in our heads. Let's say, all right, we're going to trade a double bottom on the DAX here. Uh, sorry, on the uh, on the pound I've got up here. I've switched, haven't I? Uh, on the pound, um, and you know, we always using a 25 pip stop. So. You know, it, what it does is it says, listen, we've got 25 pips stop. We don't want to be too quick on it. If we kind of jump the gun or if we're too late to the party, the stop is going to end up being kind of here, which would make no sense for us. We want to have the stop under that last low or under the low here if we're, if we're going after the tag on the second push or if we're going as it's coming up to it. We want to make sure we've got enough room. So it makes you wait a little bit 
Does that make sense? So if you've already got your bracket for the trade, you're like, okay, wait, the bracket's moving lower, bracket's moving lower, I need to get to that point to make the trade valid, otherwise my stop's still going to be within the noise area. So that's one kind of advantage of it. So, you know, I think that if you're using a fixed stop and you're using a hard stop, you need to reassess it almost day to day, week to week, uh, and not be afraid to say, okay, I've traded that this morning, it's it's not very sensible. I need to kind of readjust it now. Uh, and me do something different. And just saying, if you're swing trading, guys, if you're swing trading, let's put it on a daily chart. Same kind of thing. You know, volatility goes quiet. It goes it go, it gets quicker. So using that hard stop for every single trade um, isn't the best thing to do without reviewing it. But it can make you wait a little bit longer. So that's a hard stop. Fixed number of pips. Fixed number of ticks. One way of managing your risk. See you in the next one. Bye bye.